Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In this final tutorial video in this course, we're going to discuss event-driven programming. Event-driven programming is really at the heart of Microsoft's presentation APIs, whether it be for web or Windows. And really, for that matter, it's at the heart of just about every other API in the .NET Framework class library. It is so essential that we have to spend a little bit of time here near the end talking about it because it's that next step that will help you graduate on to building real applications with real user interfaces uh, beyond this, this course. So events allow you, the developer, to respond by handling those key moments in the life cycle of the application's execution, allowing you to write code to respond to an event being raised. All right. So up to this point in our simple console window applications that we've been building, there's really only been one event that ever gets fired off, and that is the application startup. So on application startup, uh, the static void main is executed, so it's handling that event, I guess you could say. And this is where we write the majority of our code, and that's why it actually executes whenever we run the application. Now, in a modern user interface, whether it be for Windows or for web, uh, users can interact with the various elements that they see on their screen. So they can hover their mouse cursor over given things like, uh, like buttons or, or graphics or text boxes, and they can see maybe a change in the, in the visual presentation. Uh, maybe they see a, uh, a, a pop-up that explains the usage of that given item. Perhaps they can click on an item to to enact some business functionality inside the application. They can press keys on the keyboard to make things happen. They can type inside of text fields, uh, or they can drag and drop items around the user interface. And each of those will raise a number of events. So as a software developer, uh, you can decide to write code that responds to those interactions between the end user and those various user interface elements on screen. And you can also choose to ignore those that really don't make sense, that you really don't care about, you, you don't implement for your application. So uh, a given component, let's say a button, for example, in its, in its uh, development by Microsoft, they included or defined an event, let's say it's the click event, for that button. Now, the developer, you and I, we say, hey, I want to write code that performs this business logic that I'm writing here in C-sharp whenever that event, the buttons click event is raised, then I want this code that I write to be executed. So the developer creates a method and attaches that method to the event. And I'll show you how we do that in just a little bit here. So as the application is running, the user is interacting with the application. Eventually they click that button. The .NET Framework runtime says, okay, if you were listening for the button click event, here it is. It just happened. And it will notify every one of the uh, methods that you and I as developers have attached to that specific event notification, all right, that we've registered to that event. And I'm going to show how events are used in a simple Windows application near the end of this video in a more realistic scenario. But first, I want to start with the absolute basics and keep things as clean as possible. So we're going to work purely in a console window application. And we're going to work with a timer class, a timer object, and it has one event, which is elapsed. So we can say after a certain amount of time, we want you, uh, timer object, to, uh, to execute or to raise an elapsed event, and then we're going to attach our code, our event handler code, to that event so that it gets executed every time that event is raised. All right, so maybe it'd be easier to see us see this in action and explain it. Uh, there are a number of different timer classes inside of the .NET Framework class library. We want to make sure we get the right one. So I want to work with system.timers.timer, okay? And uh, I don't want to use that long name every single time. So I'm just going to add that to my using statements up here at the top, like so. And I'm going to say timer my timer. 
equals new timer. And one of the overloaded versions of the constructor for this timer class allows us to pass in the interval in milliseconds. So every, let's say, 2,000 milliseconds, we want the elapsed event to fire, to be raised. All right, so 2,000 milliseconds would be simply two seconds, all right, uh, which is an eternity as far as a computer is concerned. Okay. Next up, what we're going to want to do is say, all right, my timer, we know that it will raise an event called elapsed. And so we want to create an event handler, a method that will be executed whenever the elapsed event is raised by the .NET Framework runtime. So here you can see that we get this little message on screen that says press tab to insert, and I press tab, and it automatically creates the method stub called my timer elapsed so and it creates it in a very specific way with a very specific method signature and it also gives us this little stubbed out uh, hey don't forget you did not implement me so throw new exception not implemented exception let's go ahead and remove that for the for the moment but notice what happened here as well. So we are attaching or registering an event called my timer elapsed to the elapsed uh, the elapsed event. So this references this code block right here. Okay, and so inside of here we can write the code that we want to execute each and every time the elapsed event is triggered inside of our application. So this is where I might write something like a console dot uh, write line, and uh, the elapsed event will send along some event arguments. And one of the interesting event arguments is actually uh, the signal time and that will give me the exact down to the millisecond when that particular event was erased okay so here we go and I'll just go um, actually let's do it this way so that we can format it nicely um, we'll call this uh, elapsed and then hour minute second dot um, FFF, that should give us uh, down to milliseconds, okay? And now what we'll do is actually tell the timer to start, start ticking by calling the start method. And then we're going to go console.readline, and we're going to say continue running until somebody hits the enter key on the keyboard, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And let's run the application. And now we see... Every two seconds, we get this message. So you can see at 32, 34 seconds, 36 seconds, 38 seconds, plus uh, some thousand milliseconds there, we get uh, that, that my timer elapsed method executing. All right. Now, let's do this. Um, let's say that we want more than one event uh, handler to execute whenever the event is raised. So I can do this all day long. I can say, hey, well, let's go ahead and add another method. This time it'll be called my timer underscore elapsed one. Notice the one. Here, I'm going to get rid of this little box again. And um, inside of this new method, I can do essentially the same thing. And I'll just use that elapsed one versus elapsed. In fact, just to make this obvious, I'm going to use that little trick we learned before, uh, just a, a lesson or two ago where we set the uh, foreground color equal to the uh, console color dot red. So that will be for the second one and then we'll do uh, whoops, console dot foreground color equals console color dot white. All right, so we can see clearly the two different event handlers that are both executing whenever the elapsed event is raised by our by our timer. So let's run the application. All right, and now we see the pair running every two seconds. All right, and we could continue adding additional event handlers to the event. All right, so that's what this little 
operator is doing. It's saying how many uh, current items are subscribing or have been attached to this event. I want you to attach this other one too. Okay. Now we can do the opposite as well. Uh, in fact, let's go console dot console dot uh, right line, um, and we'll say press enter to remove the red event. All right, probably a better way to say that, but hopefully you get the idea. And so then after this read line, we'll add another read line for the very end of the application. And in between what we'll do is actually unregister, detach this second event handler for this event. So we'll just do the reverse. My timer dot elapsed minus equals my timer elapsed one. So now we have removed it and it should no longer execute whenever the elapsed event is raised. So let's run the application. All right, so you can see, here we go. And now I'm going to hit the enter key on the keyboard and we should only see the white the, the first version of our event handler firing every two seconds, okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. All right, so this is the most simple scenario that I could think up without having to actually create a real application. And by real application, I mean one with a graphical user interface. But now that we've broached that topic, let's go ahead and build an example uh, WPF application. WPF stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. It's one of the APIs inside of the .NET Framework class library that you use to build uh, Windows applications. In other words, applications that are executed on the Windows desktop, not web pages that are executed on a server and their markup is delivered into a browser, but a true application that's running on the end user's desktop. So I'm going to go File New Project. And here I want to make sure to choose WPF application. It should be one of the templates that are installed in the new project dialog. And what I'm going to call this is WPF events, like so. All right, and then click OK. And this is not going to be a tutorial on how to create Windows presentation application uh, interfaces or how to work with it, but I just want to show you the basics are generally the same. So here we have a basic application. We can actually run the application. It'll do nothing at all. We just get a white form on screen. Uh, but I want to go to my toolbox over here on the left-hand side. I'll even pin it down briefly. And then inside of here, what I'm going to go is uh, to this rolled up area called Common WPF Controls. Now, what you see on screen might be a little bit different than what I see on my screen. Okay, Just make sure you're working inside of this main window.xaml and that you see some visual representation of your form here in the main area. All right, You could ignore everything below. That's the actual markup that will generate... Uh, what you see visually here. We're only going to work with the visual editor, but know that there's some markup that's going on to produce this, okay? But again, that's a topic for another day. I'm going to drag and drop a button onto the design surface like so. I'm going to go over here to the properties window on the right-hand side. And this will allow me to set various attributes of that object, that visual object. So for example, I can change the content to uh, click me. All right, like so. I'm also going to add a label control. I'm going to drag and drop it anywhere on this design surface. I'm going to remove the content completely, but I'm going to change the name to uh, my label, like so. Okay? Now, what I want to do is print out the phrase, hello world, whenever somebody clicks the click me button. I'm going to choose the click me button, again, by selecting it here on, in the visual editor. And then I'm going to look for this little, uh, this little lightning bolt over here in the properties window and click the lightning bolt. And this will show me a list of all of the events, all of the events that this single control, this button can, can raise. 
Now, a lot of these are going to be for very specific situations, and we can ignore the vast majority of these, but the most important one here at the top is the click event. Now, I can write C-sharp code that will execute as a result of this click event being raised by the .NET Framework because somebody, the user, clicked on that Click Me button. So I'm just going to double click here in this white area, and when I double clicked in the white area, it created this button click method stub. All right, so this is going to be my event handler code. Let me use the auto hide pin to get rid of that so I can see this. And here what I'm going to do is type in my label dot content equals hello world like so. And then I'm going to save my work and then I'm going to start applica start the application by running it. I'm going to click the click me button and it displays the word hello world inside of the little label. All right. Now, what you didn't realize is that maybe that whenever we double clicked inside of Visual Studio in this little white area right here, it created a event handler for us and it wired up or attached or registered that event to this button. You might wonder, well, where is the code that looks something like um, uh, button dot click plus equals, you know, where's that code at? Well, that's a little bit difficult to describe. If you take a look at this markup code here at the bottom and we scroll all the way to the right, that is essentially what happens right here. This code will get converted into C sharp at the point of compilation and it will create that little snippet that we were used to looking at uh, in the previous code example. However, I can create a second event handler in C sharp by doing this. Let's go to the toolbox and I'm going to actually grab another label and just plop it down anywhere. And I'm going to select that label and then go to the properties window and I'll change this to be named my other label. And then I want to change the actual content of that label to uh, be blank as well. All right, so now what I want to do then is go to the main window.xaml.cs and here I'm going to go button underscore dot click plus equals and I'm going to click the, and I could click tab to insert but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, name this manually myself button my other click like so and then I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard or actually I'm going to hit uh, that and now I'm going to you can see that I get a red squiggly line I'm going to put my mouse cursor on that line and hit control period and then choose generate the method button underscore my other click and it does it for me and you'll see something that looks very familiar here a method stub with uh, the not implemented exception and here I'm going to say my other label dot content equals hello uh, again, like so. All right, so now if I did this correctly, whenever my user clicks the button, it will not only fire off this event handler, but then also this event handler. And this event handler we wired up manually using the, te uh, the technique that we learned in the previous code example. So let's just run it and make sure this actually works, and it does, all right? So the same principles are at play here. The difference is the vast number of events that are accessible to every single visual control in your toolbox whenever you're working with the Windows Presentation Foundation API, all right? All right, so the main takeaway of this lesson is that events are all around us, and especially whenever working with Windows and web applications, we're going to write our code in methods that respond to specific events that are raised by the .NET Framework runtime in response to events that are published by the various objects 
uh, inside of, of our Windows apps, our web apps, and so on. Okay, And we can either rely on Visual Studio to wire things up for us in a very quick and elegant way like we saw here in our XAML code where we let it essentially do the wiring for us or we can take control of that process of wiring, um, of attaching, of registering an event handler to a specific event and then write the code ourselves to actually respond to that event being raised. Okay, so again, extremely important. Hopefully that's the next logical step for you is to move on to other APIs, uh, whether it be something like ASP.NET or WPF, like we've worked with a little bit right here, or the Universal Windows Platform to build uh, Windows Store applications. And uh, you'll need to know these concepts for all of those. And that pretty much wraps up this lesson uh, and this entire course. We'll have a couple of closing comments in the next video, and then that's it. Uh, so we'll see you there. Thanks.